to see how strong this storm really was, take a look at the tree behind me. That's one of Five Star's roofs that flew off and landed smack down right in the middle of the tree. We've got the band, the cheerleaders, crew, red jacket, football team. I think that's uh, proof enough why we chose them despite some tough competition. The trainer's job is to make sure that 20 amateur paddlers are having a great time, but most importantly, doing it safely. And that includes dealing with the injured. They're placed on these mats behind me, and that's when they go through the triage process. Biggest challenge for many Dillard students is finding a free outlet to keep your phone charged. These Huntington middle and high school track and field athletes say they can leave everything behind when it's time to get ready, get set, and go. The fire went from just the back of the home to engulfing the entire structure. Boxing doesn't have to be about just pounding another person. It can be about a great cardio workout between you and a punching bag. Massive tires, the roar of the engines, there's nothing quite like a monster truck rally. This is what's left of Mrs. Vaughn's dining room. The tree coming right through the center of it, breaking furniture, including her cherished mother-in-law's china cabinet. When there's life after cancer, you get to embark on a brand new adventure. The Jennings get to play, have fun, and make up for lost time. A final decision from the Federal Aviation Administration will shut down air traffic control towers at regional airports across the country. This is bad news for two Arklet Texas airports. NBC6's Jade Cunningham joins us live in the content center with the latest. Jade, what kind of reaction are you having from folks about the FAA decision? Morgan, the control tower at Texarkana's regional airport. Now his hometown of Manny is left to pick up the pieces after learning the tragic news to them. You know, that, that's the number one focus right now is getting him here. Jonathan Mitchell and his family want one thing, to bring 24-year-old Tony Purcell home. Mitchell is speaking out for his family after his cousin, who he grew up with, was kidnapped on Tuesday. You see stuff like this on the news and you think, this, you know, this will never happen to us. And, and, and finding this out, that it happened, we're all still in shock, I believe. The Purcell family waits anxiously for any updates from law enforcement, who are currently in the middle of a multi-parish search. There's no new information. It's really uh, all, all we can uh, stress to the family is we are doing everything we can. We, uh, and we will continue to investigate this until we get a resolution. On it. Mitchell points out that there's only one man who can make that happen. Robert Barthelemy who is inside the Sabine Parish Jail for kidnapping his cousin, and he's not cooperating with investigators. You know, until he does, we're not going to know why. We're not going to know where Tony is. And Robert has three kids of his own. To do this to someone's family and to someone's child is just, it's really heartbreaking. For now, the Procell family is staying strong and remembering the young man who they hope is still alive. Here in Manny, we all know Tony is Bubba, and, you know, he's, he's a kind soul and he's a good heart. And he, you know, he loved his family and his friends and, and serving his country. And, and he's got a new niece on the way. And we just want Bubba home. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. And right now we believe the crime scene investigators are wrapping up their investigation and gathering that evidence right now. We're going to be giving you all the details and following this very closely this morning. We're here on the scene um, and we'll give it back to you guys. Stay with us. All right, Morgan, thank you very much. We will check in with you throughout our newscast this morning. Appreciate it. That's going to wrap us up here for now. Leslie, back to you guys in the studio. Come on, give us a dismount. Morgan. All right. Do you want well, me to dismount? Just I'll jump off, hop off there. You can do it. Yay. Good job. The fierce weather may have knocked this Wascom business down, but it won't knock them out. I never would have thought it would ever happen again. Five Star Construction employees are back at work just hours after Thursday's storm hit with a vengeance. I was worried about if anybody got hurt or if anybody was even dead. Production manager Kyle Corey and his boss Joey Cox were working in the office when the winds suddenly picked up. Couldn't see nothing or anything. Just white, just white. And then next thing you know, it happened so fast and we got out of the car and this is what it was, all this. They ran to their cars to drive away, but couldn't see anything. So they crouched down and prayed. It lasted what felt like two minutes, and then uh, as soon as the rain slacked up, we got out of our cars, and you know, it's what you see now, which is not much left standing. To see how strong this storm really was, take a look at the tree behind me. That's one of Five Star's roofs that flew off and landed smack down right in the middle of the tree. The crazy thing is, 
This isn't the first time. This is video from the tornado that flattened the construction business back in 2010. And the last time it was much worse. I believe it was an F3 and it destroyed every single building out here, destroyed our trucks. Uh, nothing was left untouched. And just like last time, they're not missing a beat. It's been a week or two, we should have everything rebuilt back. They're already in the process of rebuilding again. It's not going to slow us down. We're used to it. We've been through it before, so we're just going to keep moving forward. Morgan Thomas, NBC6 News. C6 Spirit Stick crew makes its second stop this week in a North Louisiana town this time. We are excited to present the award live with Morgan and our partner, uh, Landers Fiat. That's right. Morgan's live at the winning school this morning. Morgan, go ahead and take it away. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Dan. This, it's about time for us to award the Landers Fiat MVC6 Spirit Stick to the Northwestern Knights. Let's go ahead and show you why they won this week. They not only, they did everything we asked them to do. They went on their Facebook page, NBC6 Spirit Stick. They vote, liked the page. They voted for the Knights. There was just so amazing things um, said on the Facebook page. Then they were loud, proud, excited. They saw our NBC6 cameras at their game on Friday night, and they showed us why they deserve to be our second week winner of the 2013 season. I guess that means it's time to give this, these no, North Webster Knights the NBC6 Spirit Stick. As teams take the field across the Arklatex, we're watching the stands, celebrating what makes football really fun, the fans. The NBC6 Spirit Stick returns for the 2013 season, and we're ready to hear the cheers, party with the mascots, get pumped up with the bands, and honor the schools with the most spirit. When students take pride in their team, support each other, and enjoy what high school is really about, we're watching. Last year, we visited nine schools, hosting pep rallies live on our morning show. The spirit stick itself transformed every week as its new owner proudly displayed their trophy. Do you want to claim the title as an NBC6 spirit stick winner? Well, here are the rules. One, fill the stands. Two, get loud. And three, like our NBC6 Facebook page and vote for your favorite school. Y'all ready for this? It's going to be bigger and better this year, and we want schools to do the same, so bring it on.